What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be traveling to one of the most notorious maximum security prisons across the country, the Red Onion. That's right. And we're going to hear some stories coming from some of the inmates on how they ended up in prison and what exactly landed them into this maximum security. Look, there's a lot of individuals that think that these guys that are in these super max prisons, they're in there because of their initial charges. And it is like that a lot of times. Some of these cats, they do some gruesome shit in the streets and they go straight to the onion. But there's also inmates that did not start off on maximum security and they ended up doing something inside of prison that landed them at the onion so they're gonna break down exactly all that good stuff and i'm gonna give you my two cents along the way so let's get right into it if you enjoyed this type of content do not forget to hit the like subscribe notification bell before you leave i come in the prison system you know fighting slinging ink hustling doing whatever He's always doing something. Last episode, he was breaking down stories of him dish ragging people left and right. I can't see this guy doing all that damn work. So I'm in population, and my cellmate tells me, look, man, you got a guy going around telling his dudes that he's going to rape me. He said he's going to knock you out. He's going to rape you. I said, okay, if I had a knife, I'd slit that boy's throat. He said, I'll make you one. Oh, man. We used to have uh, cassette tapes back then. You know the... If I had a knife, I'd slit that boy's throat right now. Bro, I got you. Don't worry. That dude's getting the battery slapped right into his back. First and foremost, he's listening to rumors from someone else. You can't trust nobody, right? You can't trust nobody in prison. So uh, you would have to try to fact check that somehow before you get the shank and go hit boy up, right? So at least I would. I'm like, man, hold on, man. I don't even really know you. How, how'd you get this information? used to have uh, cassette tapes back then. You know the plastic case around it? Took it, broke the stuff off, took a lighter, melted it, folded it in half. Did that with another one. Melted it together, and put three brand new razors in it, and melted it in there. That is actually a very common technique. Get as many pieces of plastic that you can from anywhere and melt them all together. Got yourself a nice little uh, mini bone crusher. But this is sounding like homeboy got the batteries put in his back. That expression means someone convinced him to do something they probably didn't really need to do, right? But you can't take no rumors in prison lightly. If people are saying that someone's trying to take advantage of you sexually, then you gotta get to the bottom of it. And if it, if it turns out to be true, <laughs> then yeah, you, you, you're going to have to handle your business some way. Let's see if he lives up to what he said he was going to do. But first, look at this damn prison. This is super secure. It's up in the mountains, of course, of Virginia. But look, even the door coming out to the yard has barbed wire around it so that even if you escape, you know, the cells, just to get out to the yard, which is super secure in itself, you're going to have to go around some barbed wire. I mean, this is... It's like Fort Knox. Look at the dog cages over here. Uh, this is where everyone gets their little hour out or probably like 35 minutes out because the other 10's in the shower. They got like four or five cameras right here on one door alone. Just imagine. They probably got like 2,000 cameras in this whole damn prison. Ain't nothing messing with Walmart security though. I don't give a damn if it's maximum prison or not. I walk up behind a dude, take my left hand, I wrap it and I palm his face put my right knee in his lower back and I stretch him back. I slid his throat from ear to ear. His friend said, oh my God, no. He dove like Superman and rolled up, jumped up, and ran across the yard. So when dude turned around, because it didn't really cut him deep, because you, you cutting throats ain't easy, because you got all the ligaments and tendons in there. It's, it's a lot tougher than people think it is. You know, but he bleeding like a stuck pig. So when he turns around, I just start catching him, beat the living hell out of him. This dude's always saying he beat the living hell out of someone. See, one thing I don't like about some of these stories, man, they, they be putting some dramatization into it. They come run up on me, you know, before they can tackle me and whatnot. I just step up, step back, because I didn't put the work in. You know, they put the handcuffs on me, they take me, they bring me up here. So he landed himself in maximum security for stabbing someone in prison. And this is where the consistency from prison to prison really uh, is not there. In some prisons, you get caught stabbing someone, you'll land yourself in the maximum security place like this. Possibly get a street charge and get time added to your sentence. While other prisons, you get caught up doing something like that. You go to hold for two weeks and then they'll put you right back in the general population like nothing ever happened. No street charge is nothing, right? So... 
Of course, establishments like that are going to have way more stabbings. But the consistency from prison to prison when it comes to, you know, holding up rules and regulations, there ain't none. And that's what makes it so hard to, you know, explain how to survive in some state prisons. That, that's the whole reason why I had people come on from across the country, you know, to, to explain how it runs in that state. Look at that view there. Wow, that would drive anybody insane going there every single day. Even the employees, man, you'd be coming out of work feeling a little different. But man, oh man, that is what we call the dog kennels. And it is exactly what the name says. Now you see how close they are in these cages? Well, some of these guys, man, depending on their mood, they'll, they'll, they'll let uh, things cook up in the cell and then wait till they get to the cage and throw it on other inmates, you know? So uh, that's another major thing that you got to be careful of, especially if you're in the side pocket and have to go to the kennels. Man, that place is treacherous looking. Man, I stopped at that, that damn Rite Aid one time. Had to have. Yeah, good old Virginia. In this area, you'll see a lot of uh, coal mines. Uh, for years, that was the uh, career that everybody was drawn to because it was readily available. You know, if you ever happen to go to prison, you'll see that there's legends behind those walls. And one of the legends or myths in Virginia prison system is that every staff member at Red Onion is related. That's just what people say, man. There was a, a lot of coal mines that were shutting down. People were being laid off. So a lot of the people that initially started at these places were people that were coming from the coal mines. Uh, they got the canine probably with them for every movement. Oh, man, is this D-block? Are we about to see cell 222? Oh, I think we are, y'all. <laughs> My father's still working in the coal mines. Dang. This is his 40th year working in mines. You know, I was... His pop's been in that game for 40 years in the coal industry. We call that a lifer. And would you look at my magnificent pausing abilities. We're looking at the notorious cell 420 at the onion. That working, that red onion, it's tough. But to me, it's a good job compared to the coal mine. So you got to figure if the only jobs out there for everyone is coal mining and this... I mean, you can see how a lot of these individuals probably are related. Family tend to stick together, and if they're all in the same area, uh, you know, they're all going to be working the same jobs if there's only two jobs out there. If they go to cell 222. What's up with your situation? Yeah, go over to the door right here. You. When was your charge? Charge is in January. Okay. What is a 212 charge? A threatening bodily harm charge. A threatening bodily Who did you threaten? Ooh. He threatened nobody. The officer said he overheard me talking to somebody. This guy right here might seem like he cares about the guy's story, but it don't matter. He's landed there, and that's all that matters, right? There's no turning back. But he's saying he's in there for threatening a CO. Look, I told y'all a story in the past about how that happened to me. I slept through the whistle, right, in the morning, because every morning and, you know, whenever they do count time, they come in with these whistles. And still to this day, I can't stand whistles. Thank God I ain't got to hear them no more. Anyways, I overslept through that puppy because I was up all night. So nobody wanted to wake me up. They just wanted to see the guards do whatever. And one of the guards came up to my bunk and smacked their clipboard right where my head was. It was so damn loud. I thought I got shot, tased or something. So I snap up. Me and the correctional officer have some words. It's getting heated. And I say, the next time you come around to count, I'm going to make sure I fuck it up. Right? So the person takes it to the major and says that I threatened to fuck them up. And that was a wrap, man. They put me in the side pocket till they transferred me to another prison. But I was worried. I wasn't sure if they were going to put me in like a maximum security because of this charge. But this is the crazy part about it. The first place they put me before the cell was this closet. It was literally like two, two feet by two feet. And it had a mesh cage in front of it with, you know, food slice. Oh, dear God. 
don't let this be the hole, man, because this is the hole for real. I mean, I'm in there like this. It's like a damn closet, right? Well, it turns out that's what it was. It was actually just a closet that they were using for certain things at times, but I don't know why they put me in there. Anyways, probably because they said I was threatening a staff member. Sat in there for the first few hours and they threw me into a cell. I was like, thank God. this And that, you know, the cell ain't much bigger, but damn, I wasn't trying to be standing up for the whole damn bid. So keep in mind, I'm innocent, right? I, I mean, I did threaten to mess up the count, but I knew better than threaten physical harm on a staff member even though that's what the charge was. So what did I do, man? I had to get the hell out of there. I wrote an apology letter to the correctional officer for something that I didn't even do. I apologize for nothing, man. I, just to get the hell out of that place. Got the damn request form thing back. And they, they replied. They said, we appreciate it, but you, you know, you're not going, in other words, you're not, you're not coming out. <laughs> so I sat there till they transferred me to uh, Greensville. And uh, luckily it wasn't, the onion. You know, they all want the answer yes. Before 10 o'clock in the morning, right? I've been told them you just want me But yes is not the answer that they'll always get. No, they did not. And I believe that we have a number of offenders that segregation is what the is what they want, is where is where they want to live. They're afraid for reasons they may be afraid living in to live in general population. So yeah, a lot of inmates do want to be back there. And believe it or not, the easiest way for these guys to get back to these prisons is to do some kind of physical harm to someone else. And they already know what they're getting themselves into. They want that solid, that solitary confinement. They want to be by themselves. They might be scared, like Dude said, of someone else in GP. And they took, you know, decided to check in like that using physical force on probably an easy victim or something like that, knowing that they're going to put them in the onion. But prison is a big game, just like anything else. There's tricks to the trade. And a lot of these situations is never as it seems. And then you've got some in here that just refuse to participate. What's going on? What did you do last week? Did you flood and break the sprinkler head? Oh, man. Why, why did you break the sprinkler head? Wow. So uh, I guess there is a little bit more of disciplinary action that can be taken on you, even in a super secure prison like the Onion. Homeboy got put into this cell block for popping the sprinkler heads. And I've told y'all stories in the past about me doing the same damn thing. Never do that again, man. Nasty ass rust water come flying out the sprinklers. Fire department comes. There's this one cell block that we knew how to uh, get the fire department to come at any given time. It was this old ass jail, but this cell block had like this intake system where... Uh, if there's a fire, it'll open up and let a bunch of fresh air in and the smoke out. So we had this technique to get this thing triggered and get some fresh air into the cell block. But every time we did it, the fire department would come as well. So, uh, man, it was, I'm not going to explain the technique. I think I did in the past videos, but uh, it's pretty wild. You know, so there's all kinds, you know, if there's something inside the cell block, like sprinkler heads or some kind of something, inmates are going to figure out a way to fiddle with it <laughs> you ain't got nothing to do in there man you get angry too so you just start destroying whatever next thing you know you got rust water flying everywhere and not to mention look a lot of places you pop that damn sprinkler they're going to give you like a two thousand dollar fine and a street charge but look we're going to wrap it up right there ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed a little uh taste of the red onion and we'll follow up with the next part of it later on down the road but we learned a few things today didn't we you know some people with treacherous charges go straight to these prisons and some people that just can't get right inside of prison will end up in these prisons always remember even though you're being punished and you're in prison the charges don't stop there's people every day tricking up their time and getting their release date pushed back by years you know the best piece of advice and i'll tell you every single day if i got to stick to yourself and mind your damn business but as always i salute every last one you've been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the lockdown compound y'all be safe and stay free